हेलो एंड वेलकम बैक टू मोंगो डीबी शार्डिंग पार्ट टू सो इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू रीकैप अबाउट द पार्ट वन ऑफ मोंगो डीबी शार्डिंग आई होप यू हैव लाइक्ड एंड वॉच्ड दैट वीडियो ऑन मोंगो डीबी शार्डिंग पार्ट वन सो इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू टू डिस्कस वट आर द मोंगो डीबी कॉम्पोनेंट्स विच Includes or which helps in creating MongoDB sharding in an efficient way, so that we can get best out of MongoDB sharding, MongoDB sharded cluster. So I am also going to tell you that how we can achieve best from MongoDB sharding cluster. That in a sense that which strategies you should follow, and what is the role of each and every component of MongoDB sharded components so that you are well versed with MongoDB sharding concepts. So before we move into uh, this video, I just want to quickly touch upon what we have discovered in video one. The link will be floating on your screen. So in first video, we discussed what is sharding, when to use it, key terms in MongoDB sharding that is shard key, balancer, shard key strategies. shard key is an important term right so we also discussed in the first part that what should be the strategy to select a shard key we discussed that it should have high cardinality it should not be monotonically changing either increasing or decreasing and frequency of same key read writes it should be low and sharding advantages also we discussed that it leads to high availability scalable reads and writes increased storage capacity just to ensure that whatever has been discussed so far you have gained it so i have just placed a quiz here with three four questions you can use comment section to share your answers i will not read it you can go through this pause this slide and answer your questions in the comment section moving on to components of mongodb sharding so we have primarily three components including config servers shard and router right so we we are going to discuss in detail about each of these components what does it help to whether it is required or not one thing is sure that these all three components are required then we can say that whether we want one of config one config server or multiple config servers same way one router or multiple shards so in sharding cluster it is sure that we will have multiple shards and router is basically mongo s utility is there which has to be downloaded and run so config server it saves configuration and metadata then mongo s router it set it is set up on a separate server or application server so it is good or it is recommended if we set it up on an application server where our application code is running then mongo db shard server which is surely the mongo db shards right which we have discussed so this is another view of components that client is trying to access the sharded cluster this is our sharded cluster and client is trying to access it now how can i access the mongodb sharded cluster for that as we discussed in the previous slide that we need config servers which have all the details about what is stored in which shard right it has all the metadata of that and what mongo s does is that it routes the clients request to the appropriate shard now here comes the role of shard key shard key so it is an important part right so in case i have selected a poor shard key then my query will be routed to this shard this this and this but in case the shard key is very good shard key with high cardinality right with low frequency and it is not monotonically changing 
or increasing or decreasing then it will or it may point to the one or subset of shards not all the shards right i hope that this screen is clear to you in case you have any doubt please feel free to post your questions in the comment section of this video now the role of config server it stores data and components state and organization within the sharded cluster it includes what does it include list of chunks that which shard is having which list of chunks and what does that chunk contain shards refer them basically for reading chunk metadata and please do not use the same config servers for different sharded clusters mongo has caches data from the config server so it reads the config server it connects with the uh, config server caches the data and then routes the read and write operations and you might be wondering if there is some update operation then how will it update the cache right so it updates the cache whenever metadata changes like chunks are split chunk split i have discussed in my previous video you can go through that video and whenever there is a new shard so now whenever there is a new shard that information has to go to config server which will in turn go to this mongo s it is the job of mongo s to route a query to appropriate shards best practices is that run mongo s instance on your application server so what does application server mean is that wherever you are running your code uh, to connect to mongo db or wherever your queries are running best practice is to use mongo s on that particular instance now the job of mongo s is also in case there is a sort operation in the query right then then mongo s instance opens the result cursor that round robins results from all the cursors on the shard so it sorts after the results are sent back to mongo s because this is the intermediator between client and the actual shards limits let us say want to limit the results a user has passed or application has sent a query with limit implemented in it then it passes that limit to shard and the shards are sending the limited records to this mongo s and in turn before sending results to the client it again implements the limit same is the true with skip also that unskipped results from the shards are returned right and once the results are aggregated or consolidated at the point of mongo s then it skips the appropriate number of documents shards as i mentioned earlier that it is a subset of sharded data right so like here you can see that one collection is spread over two shards shards must have a replica set deployed so it is please note that it is must it is not should it ensures high availability primary shard is that it holds the all the unsharded collection for a database for example one database can have multiple collections right and each of the collection might not require sharding because some of the collection would be easily manageable to that uh, on that particular database or that particular shard instance right the shard where all the collections of a database reside is called a primary shard and each database has its own primary shard so how how does it this be how is this primary shard selected that is the job of mongo s when we create a sharded collection or when we create a database that time it decides that that which shard is going to become primary like the mongo s selects the primary shard when creating a new database by picking the shard and then how it uses the total size field 
list databases command right with this it is it is using that now efficient sharding strategy how can we achieve efficient uh, sharding by using range sharding as well as hash sharding so range sharding and hash sharding are two strategies you can achieve efficient sharding right so that your data is evenly or most likely distributed over different shards and different chunks so it is not that one shard is getting loaded uh, by reads and write while others are free right so that should not be the case by using ranged sharding and hash sharding you can do that range sharding is basically you can say that it is easy to implement data is divided into contiguous ranges in case your shard key has high cardinality then in that case range sharding is automatically you can say implemented and it results in efficient queries shard key must be selected very very carefully in this on the other side hash sharding when shard key is monotonically changing right it is ideal for the shard key where we don't have high cardinality data for a key to be selected that time we can choose hashed and this is how we can implement hashed shard key don't worry uh, if this is something new to you i will be covering all these in detail i have planned uh, seven to eight demos to cover sharding setup create shard uh, collection right add a new shard into existing sharding cluster right all those things i am going to discuss in the coming videos as far as mongodb sharding is concerned so you can say that sharding collection collection and this is how field c we have added that it is the uh, hash function will be applied on field c moving on this is a difference that recommended when this is recommended when this is recommended this you can read it out i have already discussed it many times now summary video 1 and video 2 we have discussed components of mongodb sharding strategies for efficient mongodb sharding upcoming topics are single node windows linux sharding setup aws cloud virtual machine sharding setup and i hope you have liked this video as well to keep this video short that's why i am ending this video here and uh, i will be coming up with more videos on mongodb sharding now onward we'll show you demo on mongodb sharding how to set up on different kind of machines and how to perform it that all detail i am going to come up in the next video so thank you so much for watching this video i hope you have liked it thank you so much see you again